while back. You may have to click that on. A while back, um, one of the people here, yeah. and I'm not saying that wrong, but one of the people here said that homosexuals couldn't marry because they don't feel real love. And at that point... Well, I've never said that. I, I'm, I'm not saying that you did. I'm not saying homosexuals can't get married because they don't feel real love. I mean, I've never said that. Yeah. Homosexuals well, can't marry be because you. homosexual marriage doesn't exist in the universe. Um, okay. Amen. We will. Stick around. I'm, I'm kind of worried, to, to be honest. Why are you worried? Are you a Christian? No. What, what are you worried about? I'm worried about you guys, just in general. Are you atheist? Yes. Okay, well, why would you be worried about us? We're Christians. Well, yeah. Atheists worry about Christians? Yeah, because you're human. And I'm worried about the fact that you seem to be almost addicted to guilt, to the feeling of being guilty. And that... You know why that is? Because people get addicted to emotions. No. The reason... I, I won't use your words, but the reason why I talk about guilt before God is because Jesus said, unless you acknowledge your guilt, that you are guilty and miserable in the eyes of God because of your sin, you will never repent. Jesus said, I didn't come to call right self-righteous people to repent. He says, but I came to call sinners. So if a person is self-righteous, if they think, hey, I'm good, I got this whole religion thing, I've got my own ideas about that, I'm a pretty good person, you will never find eternal life that way. But so that's why I emphasize what the Bible emphasizes, and that is that man is guilty because he has sinned. Have you sinned? Yes. And what do you, who's going to forgive you of your sin? The people who I've sinned to. I ask for forgiveness from you've them. Made, you, you've gone around seeking reconciliation with everyone you've ever sinned against? Pretty much, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad that you're doing something like that. But ultimately, sin can only be forgiven against the one who made the law. When you sin, you're not violating a human law, you're violating a transcendent law, a divine law. You're, you're violating God's law. Yeah. So that's why Jesus came and died on the cross, so that you could be reconciled to God and wouldn't have to face God on Himself. Is this your, is this your attorney or something? Is this your, your advocate here? Uh, he actually, speak for actually you? I'm trying to become a defense attorney, so okay. thanks, but um, I don't speak for anybody. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, whether, like, if you think that God exists and you believe that you sin against Him and you ask for forgiveness from Him... Then, Asking for forgiveness is not enough. Yeah, okay. The Bible but, says you must repent. Okay, if you repent to Him and you yep. feel better about it yourself, yep. then, like... I hope you do that. If, if I don't believe in him and I just cut out the middleman, can I just be happy with who I am without having to... Well, a lot of people are happy with who they are. Pedophiles are happy with who they are. But that doesn't make them right. And their worldview is not true. And their worldview is not good or moral, even though they're happy with who they are. So being happy with who you are is not going to lead you to eternal life. It's going to lead you to hell. But no. You yes, it be, will. You can be happy. You can be happy with who you are if you're like. You can be delusional though. I just proved that. There's. Okay, go ahead. I gotta, I gotta, Why are you cutting him off? I'm not, man. This guy. We were having a conversation. Can I, can I say something to your point? Well, sure. If he doesn't mind you cutting him off. He doesn't. He just something to take the mic. Okay. He's a lot more. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. You got anyway, a, You got a question or statement or comment? I just want to say my friend's parents are married. And they're happy as hell. But you know, they're both women and they're fantastic people. And you are awful. Thank you. Thank you. Waited all day for a statement like that. We can't go without that. Yeah, when I said that, you know, gay marriage doesn't exist in the universe, what I'm talking about is the covenant of marriage that God has ordained. You see, a person like that has no courage of their convictions. They want to come up here, they want to throw stones, and then run away as quick as possible. See, that's why I'm saying it's that absurd. This is a guilt addiction, man. You know, I've talked to many atheists and skeptics on this microphone that would sit here and have a, a rational dialogue with me for for a lengthy period of time and do it quite quite well. And those people are to be commended. But people want to come up here like a kindergartner and throw out a little ha-ha comment and then run, around, run away. I mean, come on guys, you're in college now. This is not junior high. Think for yourself. Yes, sir. 
Dude, that's what I'm saying about like the guilt addiction, man. I, I think you just enjoy saying edgy things I, and then just being insulted. I don't. For it's it. not that I enjoy I, this I, or enjoy that, Zach. You, yeah, you because it's you're, that the you're Bible being teaches this. For God, you're thinking that you're being persecuted for God. I know that. In reality, that, you're well, just allowing yourself to be persecuted so I that you can would state never that it's for God later on. I personally would never identify myself as somebody that's been persecuted when my brothers and sisters are dying all around the world under real persecution. Yes, I experience opposition at UNT, but I, I don't think I'd, I'd categorize that as severe persecution of any kind. Listen, Zach, what I'm giving people is what the Bible says. So that on the day of judgment, if your eyes meet my eyes, I'm going to be free of your blood because I told you the truth. I gave you what the Word of God said. I didn't give you my opinion. I didn't say, Zach, you know, I, I, I think God doesn't like yellow shirts. You know, this is not me giving you my opinion, Zach. I'm giving you what the Bible says objectively yep. and as honestly as I can. Just telling you what you must but, but do you, but you to be reconciled. So it's still your opinion. You can agree with whatever it's what God's you want. No, no, no. The even Bible was here was, before I was. Even if it was there before you were, and even if it was God's word, and even if it was purely objective and this is moral law, you're still agreeing with it. Therefore, it is still your opinion. It's still your interpretation of it's it. It's not my opinion in the sense that it doesn't begin with me. I yeah. didn't write the Bible. But, but you choose to follow God it. God did. But you choose to follow it. Absolutely. So it's your opinion. Too. By the grace of it has become my worldview yes yeah yes absolutely but Zach here's the big the bigger picture coming back to what you said is that you've sinned and you've tried to reconcile what you've done to other people but Zach don't you understand that your sin is primarily vertical it is between you and God it is primary primarily a religious issue you have violated a divine law Okay. Every time you've lied, you've broken one of the commandments. Every time you've stolen something, you've broken another commandment. If you've ever looked with lust, you've broken a commandment. Anytime you take God's name in vain. You know what the Bible says? If you take God's name in vain, the Bible says, By no means will God clear your guilt on the day of judgment. By no means. It is a very It, it is a very serious crime to take God's name in vain. Very serious crime. He does that every time. And so what's going like to happen to you, Zach? I'm, I'm afraid for you. That if you, if you die in your state, you will go to hell. And that concerns me. That's why I'm here. That, that doesn't really concern me, though. I know it doesn't concern you because when I look at the no, Bible, I mean, even if you were right, that plenty of people you. throw their soul like, away for a bowl of soup. This is the this is the this is the depraved condition of man, Zach. This is the sinful condition of man, is that we will throw our soul away for a bowl of soup, and you by you not caring about your soul, it just confirms what the Bible teaches. Don't you see that? But you know that's why God sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross to conquer your apathy. To conquer your lack of self-worth and self-dignity. Because in the eyes of God, you have infinite value. He I, I, created I you. He created you in His image. If, he made you in His likeness. It, you are not worthless, Zach. I don't you, consider myself to be worthless. Well, but if you don't care about what happens to you when you die, if you don't care about your soul, then what I'm saying is you don't have a proper view of yourself. And this is what I've maintained for years of coming to UNT, is that without God, you don't know yourself rightly. You don't understand what it means to be created in the image of God. That you have transcendent worth and dignity that has been divinely instilled into your anthropology, if you would, into your person, into your humanness. You're, you're, you're different than an insect. You're different than an inanimate object, Zach, because you've been created in the image of God. I don't consider what are you living for? What's the purpose of life for Zach? Um, love, people, uh, peace, trying to spread as much joy around as possible again. Like, oh. it's the meaning of life is pretty obvious, actually. Like people say, what is love, and how do you define what love is? How do you? It, it's obvious. Love is caring for other people. Love well, is being cared for by Well, not for some people. Love some people don't believe that. For example, let's take Hitler. His idea of love was to take care of a particular people, like Aryans. So for him, it was supremely good for the human race only to care for Aryan people. 
but that's his definition of love. Now, who is going to arbitrate between you and Hitler at that point? Whose love definition is right? You don't know? It's hard, right? When you don't have an ultimate standard, it's very difficult to define something like an abstract concept like love. Where does love come from anyway? What is it? How do we define it? And if you say, well, just do good to other people, well, then you're proving the Christian worldview because that's exactly what the Bible teaches. And that's exactly what God revealed. It's but called the golden even rule. still, you're holding that as your own version of love as well. Like, it's, yes, because that's what the word of God says. Love is kind. Love is peaceful. Love is gentle. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love does not rejoice with unrighteousness. This is the definition of love. Well, I can define love as the exact same things without holding the same. But in your worldview, Zach, you don't have an infinite or transcendent understanding of what love is. You have a you have a humanistic sense of love. You have a personal subjective understanding of love, and you don't know what love ultimately is. Love is just, we make it up in our mind, whatever we want it to be, whatever Zach wants love to be, okay, is that's what love is. See, I would say you're not loving someone if you are violating the law of God. So if you think it is loving for people to be able to marry people of the same sex, that's not love. That's, that is love. No, it's not. Because in God's in God's morality, okay, it's a violation of his principles. And it's ultimately bad for society because God has not ordained that. And so this is where it comes back to how do you know what love is? Thank you. Yeah, so let me let me let me read what she um, just gave me here. This is 1 Corinthians 13. See, I'm a Christian, and so my definition of love is very simple. Here it is, 1 Corinthians 13. It's in the Bible. I don't have to guess. It says, love never fails. It says, love suffers long. It is kind. It does not envy. It does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. Does your version of love think evil? Well, if you approve of homosexuality, you approve of what the Bible calls evil. Stop? Yes. Just for a second, go ahead. You know this is like one of the most liberal campuses? Thank you. In Texas. How long have you been here? This is my first year here and I know... Well, I've been here five years, so I know a little bit more than you do, actually. Okay. Trust me, I know this is a very liberal place. Stop. That's why I'm here, ma'am. Nobody cares. No, that's not Separation true. Separation of church and state. Can you take this somewhere else? People have no. their own opinions. People can do what the heck they want. Including... They don't care about whatever Bible-dumping thing you have to say, okay? I yeah. appreciate that's your opinion. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that we live in a country where she can come up here and give an opinion, even if it's an erroneous understanding of separation of church and state. That's okay, that's her opinion. She can espouse whatever false ideas she wants because we live in a free country. Thankfully, we still have somewhat of the freedom of speech. But you see, if we don't define morality, love, ethics, all of these things by the word of God and by God's laws, then we have no ultimate way to know what is moral and what is not moral. The Bible says to love God is to hate evil. So we have a complete difference of worldview. You see the problem with that, Zach? If everybody gets to define what love is, well then your personal definition of love is irrelevant. Because everybody gets to make up their own version of what love is. I mean, there's a professor at the University of Montreal right now, okay, a PhD, who is teaching psychology, who writes in the sociology and the physics journals and, and everything else, and he has just stated that he believes that intergenerational intimacy is a sexual orientation just like homosexuality. He says they can't help it. They, they are not attracted to any other people except people of, of a younger sex or of a younger age. They can't help it. That's their orientation. Who are you to judge them? This is the kind of rhetoric that is going on right now in places like the University of Montreal. We got psychiatrists saying people can't help it. They love little children. If you don't think we're living in that kind of world, you are in a dream world. 
because that is reality. It is. Yeah. I, I see that as messed up too. And the homosexual but community is the is last it? person to ever object to pedophilia. Because if the only thing that is required is that you love that person, that you have, that you get it's to define what love is, that they and who are they to judge? Have consent to What's that? Consent is kind of a thing, you know. Um, you can get a child to consent to something. You could, but they're not, they don't have the capacity yet. Oh, there's a lot of powerful people that are arguing the opposite right now as we speak. And, and they're wrong. Okay. You be, so you believe in gay marriage? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Who decided yes. on the number two? Do you believe only two gay people should get married? No. I mean, people want to like marry How many people, people should be able to get married? 20? I, I don't care. People this is exactly married. what is wrong with postmodernism, folks. Now we've gone from homosexual marriage is good and right and okay to Zach saying, who cares how many people get married? 20 people can marry each other now? Or 700. I mean, what kind of society Solid. Solid are we going to have Solid. when it's all over? <laughs> Your own Bible has polygamy all over the place. Man. And it is Old condemned. Old Testament, New Testament, it's all up in there, man. And it is condemned by the, by the Bible. This is why I love the Bible. The Bible tells you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help God himself. God doesn't hold any punches. He records the sins of his people. Even Noah, even David.